dear friends, dear partners, dear colleagues from all around the world, welcome to you all. It's good to have you around the table in these extraordinary and difficult times. And I hope that you're all in good health. Unfortunately, again, we meet online and not in person. But on the other hand, it's good that thanks to today's solutions for online meetings, we are able to discuss all our important items and make decisions together. And I'm happy to say that we have a lot of people around the world joining this meeting. I want to start with uh, the attendance and the apologies, which is item number two on the agenda. We have full members present and the persons representing the full members will introduce themselves. themselves. Following the articles of the Daisy Consortium, only full members have voting and election rights, which are exercised by their official representatives who are present in this meeting. During the introduction, the full members and the persons representing the full members indicate which organization they are representing. I will ask the members, the persons representing the full members uh, to introduce themselves in the order as shown on the slides. For the non sighted representatives, Fernando, you can introduce yourself directly after Elin Nord. And Scott, you are on after Minna. And Thomas, you're on after Scott. My name is Martin Verboom. I'm the president of the Deji Consortium and I'm the chair of this meeting. I'm representing Dedicon from the Netherlands. I'm Michael Katzman. I'm the treasurer of the Daisy Consortium and I'm representing the National Library Service for the Blind and Print Disabled Library of Congress in the United States. Hi, I'm Alison Long and I'm representing RNIB in the UK. Hello, my name is Arne Kirchebø. I'm from NLB in Norway. I'm representing the Norwegian Daisy Consortium. Hello, Brad Turner from the United States representing Benetech Bookshare. Hello, I'm Elin Nord from Swedish Daisy Consortium. Bonjour, I'm Fernando Pinto da Silva from the French Federation of the Blind and I'm representing the Daisy France Group. Hello, I'm Flavia Kippele from the SPS in Switzerland, and I'm representing the Swiss DAISY Group. Hello, I'm Francisco Martinez. I'm representing ONCE, the National Organization of Spanish Blind Persons in Madrid. Hello, uh, I'm Hiroshi Kawamura, representing Japan DAISY Consortium, based in Tokyo. Next name on the slide is Ki A. Young from Korea, from the Korean National Library. And I'm afraid Ki A. Young is not present at the moment. So we go on, go on with Michael. Hello, I'm Michael Wright, representing NOTA Denmark. Hello, I'm Minna von Tansen from Celia, Finland. I represent the Finnish Daisy Consortium. Good morning and good day to you all. I am Scott Labar from the National Federation of the Blind here in the United States, and I live here in Colorado. Thomas, can you introduce yourself? Martin, I don't see Thomas in the list at the moment, so um, oh, okay. maybe uh, Dave will send the link to him just yes. in case that's gone missing. Okay. Maybe Thomas will join us later. Thomas is the representing person from the German Association of Medibus. So those were the voting members 
present in this meeting. We have also members of the DAISY Consortium staff present. Maybe they can introduce themsel uh, themselves, please. Thank you, Martin. This is Richard Orm. I'm Chief Executive of the DAISY Consortium based in the UK. George Kirscher, Chief Innovations Officer and uh, with Benetech, uh, the Senior Officer of Global Literacy in the United States. Hello, everyone. And this is Avnish Singh, Chief of Strategy and Operations, DAISY Consortium, and I'm based in New Delhi, India. And in addition to Richard, Avnish, and George, we have other staff, uh, other members of the team observing the meeting also. Thank you very much. Um, we have no apologies received, but we note that uh, Kia Young from Korea is not present at the moment and that Thomas Kalish is not present at the moment, but maybe he will join later. We also have uh, a number of associate members present in this meeting. We will not go through the list of associate members who are present at the meeting. Um, following the articles, full and associate members can participate in this general meeting. Uh, but like, like last year, we have decided to allow not only members, but also friends, publishing partners, network partners, individual supporters, and others who are interested to join this meeting as observers. And I'm glad to say that in, to that in total, more than 130 people from 26 countries have re registered for this meeting. And knowing that there are also people sharing the screen, there are probably even more people present. Agenda item number three, the acceptance of the agenda. You've all received the agenda before the meeting. And probably you noted that in the first part of the meeting, we have to cover the business items. We will do this as efficient uh, as possible and also as quick as possible. After the business part, there is a DAISY member showcase. Four different initiatives in which members of the DAISY consortium are working together will be presented to you. We have, we have one addition to the agenda, which is the election of the treasurer. We will cover this item after the review and approval of the minutes of the last meeting. Agenda item number four, the confirmation of the scribes. I will propose that the chief executive officer of the DAISY Consortium, Richard Orm, will write the minutes. Do you all agree of Richard Orm writing the minutes? Yes. Uh, yes. 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 Okay, Richard, please. Go ahead. The next agenda item is the review and approval of the minutes of the 2020 general meeting held on June the 3rd in 2020. You've all received the draft minutes in your package. Are there any comments on the draft minutes of this meeting? Apparently, there are no comments. In that case, I will ask the general meeting for the formal approval of the minutes. So please, voting members, say yes if you are agree with the minutes of the last meeting. Yes. 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 So the minutes of the last meeting are approved. The next item is the election of the treasurer. Our treasurer, Michael Katzman, has reached the end of his term after this meeting. 
I'm glad to announce that we have a candidate for the position of treasurer after Michael resigned from this position. And our candidate is Alison Long, the board member and the representing member of uh, RNIB in the UK. RNIB has nominated Alison for this position. And yesterday, the board of the DAISY Consortium made the recommendation to the general meeting to elect Alison for the position of treasurer. Alison, maybe you have to say some words at this moment. Yes. Um, so, uh, yes, I, I've um, been put forward for this role and um, I very much look forward to hopefully being elected to it. Um, I feel my um, knowledge and experience um, uh, in my uh, 30 years at, at RNIB um, give me the, uh, you know, the, the requisite uh, skills and abilities to fulfill the role. Um, and yeah, very much look forward to it. Thank you, Alison. So, voting members, may I have your votes? Please say yes or aye if you vote for Alison. Aye. 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 Yes. Are there any voting members who say no to Alison or who want to withhold their votes? Nope. So, Alison. Congratulations, you're our new treasurer right after this meeting. And we wish you every success. Thank you very much. And that brings me to the next agenda item, which is the annual report of 2020. And I would like to ask Richard to introduce this annual report. Thank you, Martin. The annual report provides an opportunity to describe and celebrate the DAISY Consortium, the progress of our projects and the achievements of our members. In the annual report, we have a wonderful message from our president, a reminder of our vision, mission, key activities, and also that as a consortium, we're a community of organizations and individuals working together to deliver these. In our year in review, we mentioned that the board meetings and general meetings were held online for the first time and recognized changes in board membership. And the annual report provides short accounts of our developments, our training and technical support, and our inclusive publishing activities, together with links for more information for each of these. And in the member spotlight section, we feature many of the stories sent in by DAISY members and friends from around the world. The voting members and observers all have a copy of the draft version of the annual report, and it's been available on our website for more than two weeks. If approved by the general meeting, the report will be finalized with a front cover and will be published on the DAISY website in Word and EPUB formats. The annual report is also the place where we publish the summary of our audited accounts. So I will pass to the DAISY Consortium Treasurer, Michael Katzman, to present this part of the report. Thank you, Richard. Uh, last year, we obviously a challenging year for DAISY. Uh, most of the DAISY activity fortunately for us, uh, happens online or remotely. So uh, the disruption in the work of the consortium was a lot less than it could have been, and it was for many other organizations. Uh, we did uh, have, obviously, a disruption to those activities that were to be in person, mostly training activities. Um, but uh, those, uh, those projects were adjusted to uh, uh, create a, a more of an online uh, training experience. Our revenues dropped slightly 
um, by about one hundred thousand dollars from what they were in uh, 2019 and uh, uh, commensurately the expenditures also dropped. Um, so that represents about 8% uh, drop in uh, revenues and uh, expenditures. Uh, we ended the year with about 20, well, with $29,000 uh, surplus over uh, uh, uh expenditures so that money uh, is designated by the board to go into our strategic fund uh, we have a, um, uh, a fund uh, for contingencies and then uh, we've been accumulating surpluses over the last couple of years uh, in a strategic fund that is designated by the board to be used for projects uh, furthering the mission of the uh, consortium. Our uh, full member uh, revenue accounts for 39% of uh, total revenue, uh, which is down from 2019 from 47%. The rest of the revenue is uh, mostly from project revenue so uh, a particular project is funded externally and uh, we execute it um, uh, making expenditures against the income that comes in from the project funding so the consortium is in a good place um, financially uh, as i hand over my uh, responsibilities to allison uh, we do um, we have lost recently a couple of full members, and as I say, full, full members make up a large uh, percentage uh, of our revenue, so um, uh, that is of a concern, um, but um, going forward, we do have uh, the flexibility to adjust uh, in the short to medium term for fluctuations in uh, full member um, numbers and uh, we hope uh, other full members can uh, join us and those members who have left uh, rejoin when circumstances uh, uh, are, are better for those organizations. So thank you Richard. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Richard, for uh, introducing the annual report and also the financial situation of the DAISY Consortium to us. Um, I think the annual report gives a good overview of what has been accomplished last year. And I'm glad and proud to, and to be able to conclude that the work of the DAISY Consortium has largely continued as planned throughout this crisis. Um, We've made important achievements in the fields of standards and tools, the support of the DAISY membership, training, and also in the field of inclusive publishing. Uh, I, I think that we can really be glad and proud on that uh, achievements. Um, for all of this, I want to con congratulate the management and the staff. And also DAISY, the DAISY Consortium proves to be a financially sound organization. So thank you, Michael, Michael Katzman, for your positive and constructive contribution as a board member representing the NLS for many years. And of course, for taking up the position of the treasurer for the last two years. In this role, you are a competent, calm and steady and everything you might expect from a treasurer. And of course, we had a good time together with you. Michael, we will miss you and enjoy your retirement. Thank you, Martin. So the next thing is that I have to tell you that the DAISY board recommended to the general meeting to approve of the annual report for 2020. So I wish to ask all the full members, all the voting members, 
FDIR approving the annual report for 2020? Yeah. Please say yes. 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 Thank you. The next agenda item is the discharge, the discharge of the board for 2020. Voting members, can I ask you to discharge the boards of directors by formally approving the board's actions in the business year 2020? Please say yes, yes. or aye. Aye. Yes. 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 Aye. Yes. Any objections? No. So thank you for that. The board is being discharged by the voting members of the general meeting. Next agenda item is the decision on the membership fees for 2022. Yesterday, the board had its board meeting and recommended to the annual general meeting that the membership fees for next year in all categories remain unchanged for 2022. And addition, in addition to this, that if the November meeting for this year will be online, then the full member invoices will be adjusted again as done last year. Effectively, effectively refunding funds provided for travel to board meetings that are not utilized. May I ask the voting members to agree on this decision on the membership fees for 2022? Yes. 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 Oh. Thank you very much. Next agenda item is the new and changing membership. We have had a official request from CNIB from Canada to change its, its full membership into associate membership. This was discussed yesterday in our board meeting and the board recommends to the general meeting to approve the change of status of CNIB from full member to associate member. Voting members, do you agree? Yes. 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 Well, thank you. So the membership of CNB will be changed from full member into associate member. We've also some new associate members and friends coming in. These are already approved in principle by myself. The meeting has to ratify my approval of uh, the allowance of these new associate members and friends. Richard, can you, can you shortly introduce these new members and friends? Thank you, Martin. Uh, formally, we have uh, two associate members to approve, but I'll also mention the new friends and individual supporters uh, in this piece. So the new associate members since the general meeting, the first is Light for the World. Light for the World is an international disability and development organization whose vision is an inclusive society where no one is left behind. They strive for accessible eye care services and support inclusive education, empowering persons with disabilities to participate equally in society. Their headquarters is in Vienna, Austria, and Light for the World participates in projects with the DAISY Consortium especially in extending accessible reading services in low-income countries. And the second is the Sao Mai Center for the Blind, which is a non-profit organization established in 2001. And their main activities are to empower visually impaired people by using and developing assistive technology in education, employment, and daily living activities. Uh, they also provide solutions cons consulting and assistive products and they provide vocational job training and job placement. The Sao Mai Center for the Blind is based in Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam 
and they are participating in the Music Braille project. In addition to these associate members, since the last general meeting, the following organizations have become friends of the DAISY Consortium. Sonar Interactive Limited. Sonar provides an accessible content development platform, beg your pardon, a content platform designed for people with print disabilities. And their products enable users to easily access reading material in audio formats through virtual assistants using simple voice commands. Sonar partner with publishers and institutions, including DAISY members, to make their content accessible to people with print disabilities so that books without barriers can be a reality. And Sonar are based in Auckland, New Zealand. And the following organizations have joined as a friend of the DAISY Consortium under our inclusive publishing program. The Canadian Electronic Library, who are an aggregator of eBooks for Canadian publishers, serving primarily a library market through their platform. And they also offer digital conversion systems for publishers. The Canadian Electronic Library are based in Ottawa, Canada. Next, we have EBSCO Information Services, who are a major provider of online research content and search technologies for academic, school and public libraries, and for healthcare and government agencies around the world. EBSCO provide institutions with access to eBooks and journals, and their accessibility teams are participating in DAISY working groups on accessible publishing content, and reading systems. And EBSCO are based in Ipswich, Massachusetts, the USA. Finally, I should mention that DAISY, we also have a category of individual supporters. And since the last general meeting, we're delighted to welcome Bill Kasdorf, who is based in the United States. So formally, the two recommendation or approvals we need from the board are for the associate members, Light for the World, and the Sao Mai Center for the Blind. Thank you, Richard. Yeah. Voting members, do you uh, approve of the new of the membership of the new associates members, Light for the World, and the Sao Mai Center for the Blind? Yes. 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 Thank you very much. So welcome, you. Associate members, welcome new friends and welcome new individual supporter. Now we have the next agenda item is the location of the general meeting in 2022. We have discussed this yesterday in our board meeting and unfortunately at this moment we cannot predict yet on the possibilities for travel around the globe for next year. So therefore we are not able to announce a location and a date for next year's general meeting. Probably it will be in May or beginning of June, but I can say you that we intend to have our meeting also open for online participants and observers. As soon as we know more details about next year's general meeting, this will be announced. So with this item, we come to an end of the business part of, the, of, the, of this meeting. And the next part is the DAISY member showcase. We have a showcase in which we can see different examples, four examples, of DAISY members working together around the world. We will see an example by DAISY and the Sayomai Center for the Blind in Vietnam. We will see an example of Light for the World and UNABPAM in Burkina Faso. And we have examples on inclusive publishing from Benetech and partners in Canada and Finland and an example of a project, joint project, between Brianet, Dedekon, and the Johannes Kepler University in Austria. So please 
Start the show. DAISY members, supporters and friends, welcome to this showcase of the work of the DAISY Consortium. This year, you will hear just a few examples as we highlight some of the wonderful activities of our organisation under the theme of DAISY members working together around the world. Let us begin, though, with a reminder of our guiding vision, which is that people have equal access to information and knowledge, regardless of disability, a right confirmed by the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. And the mission of the DAISY Consortium, to develop global solutions for accessible publishing and reading, in partnership with civil society, publishing and technology industries, standards bodies and governments. This leads us to the domains in which we work. Supporting the DAISY community. Extending the DAISY community. Driving inclusive publishing. You'll hear examples from all of these areas in the next few minutes. Let's turn to our work supporting the DAISY community, where we set out to provide standards and best practice, tools and technologies to enable accessible reading services. The DAISY Consortium has a proud history in this domain and we continue to expand possibilities. So let's hear an example of a project that many DAISY members are invested in with special contributions by members in Germany and Vietnam. Hi everyone, I'm Dr Sarah Morley-Wilkins, the project manager of the DAISY Music Braille project. In this consortium project, DAISY members, sector specialists and end users from all around the world are working together to improve access to Music Braille. The project is kindly funded by contributions from DAISY itself, DAISY members and other sector supporters. And I'm delighted to be here to share our excellent progress this year, describing the improvements we're making to file format standards and conversion tools. Project participants are sharing expertise to improve file format standards for source files like Music XML and working with music engravers in places like India, China, Russia, UK and the USA to help publishers create more useful masters which we can convert more easily into Music Braille. Having virtual meetings this year, driven by necessity, has allowed us to bring together international DAISY members and sector specialists all at the same time, which might have been impossible if we tried to meet in person, including colleagues from, for example, America, Australia, Canada, China, Europe, Japan, New Zealand, Vietnam and India. We're also considering how we can share capacity and expertise, working as a pool of worldwide Music Braille transcribers, so agencies can easily outsource or source Music Braille production between each other. Our DAISY project is also supporting the development of two kinds of conversion tools to meet the international requirements we collected in our worldwide sector survey. An automated tool for professionals, the other an interactive tool for end users. Firstly, we're supporting our DAISY colleagues at DZB Leeson to develop their tool Make Braille to suit wider international requirements. Make Braille is an online, automated and accessible Music Braille conversion tool aimed at professional transcribers, which converts well-marked up Music XML files and scanned print music files into Music Braille for embossing or reading on a Braille display. We have a worldwide group of testers and the tool will be available for wider use in 2022. Secondly, we're supporting the development of an interactive music tool for blind musicians so they can independently create, explore, read and output music in multimedia formats, including Braille. The steering group of DAISY members selected MuseScore and Say oh My Braille to work together to develop a fully accessible mainstream music notation and editing experience. MuseScore is a free, world-leading and open source music tool, but has some accessibility issues which are being addressed through this project. And MuseScore cannot currently handle Braille input or output. But with the help of Phuc Dang and his team from the Sao Mai Centre for the Blind in Vietnam, that will soon change. Please tell us more, Phuc. Yes, thanks, Sarah. Hi, everybody. For your information, Sao Mai Braille SMB is a Braille translation software for Windows, which supports users to edit and translate text, math, typographic, and music into Braille. Throughout this two-year DAISY project, we are going to improve and develop 
new features for SMB to handle Braille music translation based on the MBC rules with different format options for beginning, professional readers, and transcribers. In addition, SemiBrill will connect to the musical software for file conversion, as well as translating direct musical data files into Braille. Together with the musical team, Semi will develop new Braille related features for musical software, including adding live Braille music translation while editing the score, supporting additional six key Braille music input mode, exporting to BIF for embossing or reading on a Braille display, and developing an SMB plugin for musical to connect to the Braille music translation web service to get a high quality Braille result. The Braille music translation web service will be developed to let third party software to connect, send a score, get back the Braille output, and show the file directly in its user interface. Our users can save it for embossing or reading on a Braille display. For instance, the SMB plugin for MuseScore will use this web service. In addition, at Samai, we have built the fully accessible music reading app for blind musicians for both Android and iOS platforms called SM Music Reader, which will also connect to this web service for Braille music output. Yes, that's my brief report about our works. And thanks for your listening. Now let's hear about our work in extending the DAISY community, where it's our ambition to expand accessible reading services and partnership with the publishing industry. And here's an example from an international disability and development organisation to develop accessible reading in the West African country of Burkina Faso. We hear first from Nafisa Babu, their Director of Inclusive Education. Light for the World is a disability and development organisation and we focus on promoting the rights and access of persons with disabilities. We focus predominantly in sub-Saharan Africa, in countries such as Burkina Faso, Ethiopia, South Sudan, Mozambique. So those are particularly low-income countries. Um, I am speaking today from Cape Town, South Africa, but our headquarters is in Vienna, Austria. And we have country offices in several sub-Saharan African countries, including Burkina Faso, Ethiopia, Mozambique. We also believe in partnership and collaboration to meet our goal of tackling poverty and creating an inclusive society. And one of the organizations that we are a member of or associate member of is the DAISY Consortium. My name is Philippe Compare. I'm speaking from Burkina Faso. So there is the book famine for students at a primary post-primary, secondary, and uh, university. So this book famine don't help the students to access to the higher level of education. So the, most of them drop out because they can't access books mainly from the post-primary up to uh, university. So we got the chance to meet a DAISY consortium member experts and and we start to uh, working together to make pedagogical resources access to uh, students with visually impaired. We are collaborating with several DAISY consortium members across the world to really make things happen in Burkina Faso. This is one of the things about this project that I think is super exciting. It we are working with UNLP Palm and they are a uh, the Organization for People with Visual Impairment in Burkina Faso. We also work with the Ministry of Education in Burkina Faso on this, and we have their support around this program too. Through the DAISY Consortium, we've been able to get amazing technical support from, from consultants in India and France, and they provide us great technical expertise during the scoping and also now the implementation of the project. And the DAISY friend in China have helped us to modify some of the devices that we've received so it will be accessible in language facilities in French. 
So this um, program has been an amazing collabor- collaborative effort of many organizations across the world to ensure visionary learning for um, students with visual impairment. We reinforce uh, the UNAB PAM Transcription Center in materials to make it fully functional and make it an accessible publisher center. We will produce around 500 textbooks in accessible format as well. We have started during the lockdown due to COVID to produce these textbooks in accessible format for the students so that would easily prepare the exam. And this was very helpful for, for them. We have a training workshop on production of accessible book for professionals from publishing houses. We we also to buy at least uh, 150 uh, different devices to help students in order to uh, use them and access to uh, accessible books. We will produce an awareness rising documentary film on the the use of accessible digital technologies. We will create and distribute an online library on accessible titles. Also set up a powerful broadband access hub so that students, teachers, parents, and the people with disabilities can easily access reading materials online. Bookshare has also come on board in providing a bookshare for Burkina Faso, which is really one a first for, for the region. And we're very excited about the potential to, to revolutionize education for the students in the country. Definitely, all these activities will improve the learning condition and the success of the students. Yeah, we, we are quite sure that of, uh, most of them or we will have many of them succeeding in the secondary uh, uh, school and also at the university. This is an awesome example of DAISY Consortium members working across the world to enable access to education uh, for, for students in Burkina Faso. Now we turn to our third domain of activity, driving inclusive publishing where our DAISY members are working across the mainstream publishing industry to bring about the era of born accessible publications. And we hear first from how one of our members in the United States is working with other DAISY members in Canada and Finland and beyond to help publishers create accessible publications time after time. Here's Michael Johnson, Director of Content Partnerships. Thank you, Richard. Benetech is a 20 plus year old charity nonprofit here in the United States. Our focus is to use technology for the greater social good. Our largest program is around global literacy. And the main focus of that is using technology to ensure and deliver accessible digital content for people with print disabilities. We have the Bookshare program, which has almost a million titles in its repository available to our members around the world. And we also have the Global Certified Accessible program, where we work with publishers to teach them how to create content fully accessible or born accessible, as we like to say, as part of the natural production process. So the GCA program has been about as an idea, starting from an idea about four years ago. And we were able to work with DAISY and other DAISY member organizations in the very beginning to build out the standards and parameters on how we were gonna run the process. It's been fully active as a publisher service for a little over two years now. And we are going at full speed with uh, publishing and conversion house clients in five or six different countries on three different continents. So Daisy was instrumental in helping us get along. And Daisy has also helped us spread the word around the globe by uh, allowing us to participate in the Daisy webinar series, as well as being co-presenters on various panels at various conferences to help educate the publishing community. So the GCA program is growing by leaps and bounds. We're all very proud. And we're working with a number of other Daisy organizations around the world. The uh, two most immediate examples were we are working with uh, in Canada, where we have a full GCA training program in place in Canada. There are 30 publishers participating there. 
and they're going to go through and be certified by Canadians for Canadian publishers. So that's a big project. We're very excited. We're also very excited about another project in Finland where we're working with Celia. It's a smaller project, but it's still exciting. There's a small group of Finnish publishers that Celia are coordinating who are going through our process at the very beginning stages. Here's how your books look now. Here's what you've done right. Here's where you need improvement. And here's how you could go about doing that. We're excited about the Finnish project, even though that it's modest, because our goal is working with Celia to extend the project out to the Nordic Inclusive Publishing Initiative, NIPI, which would then uh, allow us to deliver the program in the Nordic countries. We've also had a, a series of meaningful conversations going on uh, in the UK and in Ireland. So there's a lot going on with various stages organizations as the GCA program begins to expand globally. The GCA is designed to help people with print disabilities because we're helping the publishers bake accessibility right into their regular production workflow, just like they would bake in scientific rigor or quality of editing. So it just becomes part of the natural creation process. So when any book that goes through a GCA certified workflow gets published and goes out into the sales and distribution channel, it will be fully accessible so that any reader, including readers with print disabilities, will be able to just purchase it, same as anybody else would purchase any other ebook file. So the GCA program, as I mentioned, is growing around the world, and we look forward to working with any and all organizations, especially our fellow DAISY member organizations, to develop a customized local GCA program for their environs, whether it's uh, national or regional, whatever it happens to be. For our final example of DAISY members working together across the world, let's travel from North America and Scandinavia over to France, the Netherlands and Austria, to hear how some organisations are partners on a European project to support publishers on their journey towards accessibility. To tell us more, here's digital accessibility specialist Katie Durand. Brightnet is a non-profit organisation. We're based in France. I'm British, as you can hear, but I, I also speak French. Brynet was started in 1998 and really is focused on, on four main activities, improving access to reading, improving access to web content. We also organise events each year to raise awareness around digital accessibility. And we uh, do a number of research and development projects. We're a member of the DAISY Consortium and we work hand in hand with a lot of partners internationally on a number of digital accessibility projects, both on web accessibility and digital reading. With the European Accessibility Act, which is very much on, on all of our radars, both public bodies, publisher associations, that they're, they're looking for ways to support professionals in their efforts to produce born accessible publications. For someone who's coming to the topic, we, we want to provide some information on, on the user and how they will be impacted by having access to born accessible publications. We're very, very much aware that at the moment, the conversation is taking place within the production teams where, that have focused on the, the, the actual end product, but we want to shift the, the discussion a bit more towards the, the publishers and the, the editors, the, the people who are involved earlier on in the chain so that they have access to the information, they understand why they need to do this, and, and that it's something that will benefit everyone. We are working on this project with two main partners, Dedicon, who, who need no introduction, who are DAISY members along with, with Brynet, and another organisation which is part of the greater DAISY family, if you like, the Johannes Kempler University in Linz, who, who are historic partners of Brynet. And we're really pooling our knowledge and our experience of, well, of, of three things, really, of publishing, in particular digital publishing, of accessibility requirements, and of training and awareness raising activities. We have decided to pool all of our, our experience and try and come up with an online learning platform, which um, we hope will provide publishers with a, with a hands-on tool to really start to get um, them going with this topic in their organisations. It's a 30-month project altogether. It's funded by the European Erasmus Plus Fund, 
The project is split into three key phases. The first was scoping out the project, so deciding what content we wanted to produce and what to focus on. The second was developing the, the, the technical solution for that, so the platform that we, we will be developing and delivering this content on. And the third phase is really developing the content and then translating it into the partner languages. The core language is English, and it will be, then be translated into French, Dutch, and German. We hope that people with print disabilities ultimately will have access to more born accessible publications on the market, the same price and at the same time as other users. We also hope that there, there'll be a great awareness and uh, an understanding of, of user needs and that publishers will be encouraged to strive to meet those needs within their standard workflows, that this reinforces the, the practices that are already out there on resources such as the DAISY knowledge base, that this, this is really just reinforcing the common message that we should all be striving to produce quality publications based on the same methods and the same techniques so that the user really knows that when they buy a book, a born accessible book, it meets a certain standard and that they will be able to use it and engage in it. So this is very much a partnership. It would not be possible if we weren't able to work with our fellow members of the DAISY Consortium. They've been instrumental in sharing, whether it was in the planning stage when we were distributing a questionnaire to publishers or as we have a conversation around how we would like this resource to be used. Association Bionet would not be able to conceive this type of project on our own. It's very much a joint effort and we're delighted to be working with our counterparts in other countries also members of the of the daisy consortium on this project well that brings us to the end of the showcase where we've heard about daisy members working together to develop new tools to extend accessible reading to new parts of the world and to lead inclusive publishing thank you to those that shared their stories and whilst we celebrate these achievements we can also acknowledge that there are so many examples of collaboration and partnership that we could have featured. Working together both defines and characterises our organisation, with DAISY members, supported by the DAISY team, working together to fulfil our mission to develop global solutions for accessible publishing and reading. Thank you for being members of the world's organisation transforming opportunities for people with print disabilities. Well, thank you, Richard. Thank you all presenters of this wonderful show, of this wonderful showcase. I think these presentations are good examples of, in which members of the DAISY Consortium are working together to make information accessible. It's good to see that this happens in different fields of activity of today's consortium, in the fields of tools and technologies, supporting members, extending accessible reading to new parts of the world, and on the field of inclusive publishing. In this way, we are contributing all to make our guiding vision come true. People have equal access to information and knowledge, regardless of disability. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this general meeting. If you would like to know more, if you're looking for information, if you're looking for support or working together with other partners, please contact our staff. And if you're not yet connected to the DAISY Consortium, and if you're considering becoming a member, a friend, a partner, or, or a supporter, you can contact our staff as well. I want to say thank you to the management and the staff for the excellent organization of this meeting. And I want also to thank all of you for participating in this meeting. And I hope to welcome you next year as well. Meeting is closed. Thank you. <laughs>